Good morning, Illini, and welcome back. Once again, I'm your host, Matt Schrock, and we're here with another Healthy Illini podcast. Uh, The spring semester is just around the corner, and everyone is trying to get back into a regular groove after the holiday break, kind of get back into their routine. And so uh, we want to close out our four-part series on student affairs units here at UAUC. And today we're shining the spotlight here at McKinley Health Center. Today I'm joined by Nick Chancellor. Uh, He's the Assistant Director of Program Support Services, has his Doctor of Chiropractic, and his Master's of Science in Advanced Clinical Practice. Nick, thanks for being here this morning. Thanks for having me, Matt. You know, almost every podcast we've done so far ties to some something that McKinley is involved in. Um, We're highlighting some event or something along that lines. Um, But today I really wanted to focus on the focus directly on some of the core values that we have and what McKinley is doing to continually improve the student experience when it comes to healthcare on campus. And and your office is is really instrumental in doing a lot of those things. Uh, You work with the Center for Quality. Let's just start there. If somebody comes in and hears Center for Quality at McKinley, what does that mean? Center for Quality means a wonderful team of hardworking individuals dedicated to quality, which I know is still super vague. So what we'd like to tell people is when it comes to Center for Quality, there's a couple of things we really work on. We work on quality. We work on risk. We also work on assessment and accreditation. And those four things really do tie together very nicely because when we're talking about Center for Quality, our purpose is to make sure that we are really sticking ourselves to our core values. We're holding ourselves to safety, quality, and service, those things that really drive McKinley. And so what we do is we leverage our quality and our risk to make sure that the services that we are giving here are actually very safe services, they have high medical standards, and that we know that the safety of our students is really well taken care of. That then allows us to switch into more of this service-oriented piece, which is really where Center for Quality spends a lot of time. When we start talking about our service, that's where we start talking about our assessment pieces. We have tons and tons of monitoring in place to see what's going on within McKinley and around McKinley so that we actually get some feedback about our services that we're providing. We get to to one of the big things we do is patient satisfaction to make sure that that's moving forward. Uh, We also make sure that there are some other surveys that are going on to make sure that our providers believe that what we are doing here is safe as well. So that we're really checking the pulse of the user of McKinley, but also of the staff of McKinley to bring those things together. Um, The other thing for quality for us really is talking about what we call occurrences and complaints. We monitor things that happen in our building that are unexpected. Um, As an example, anybody that walks in the building, we assume that they're walking right out of the building whenever they're done. We don't expect them to slip and fall somewhere. But if they do, we actually need to know about that. And we do monitor that to make sure that, you know, why did the person fall? Was it a medical event that they had happened to themselves? Was it, you know, a snowy day where we had a lot of snow come in and we had a wet spot that occurred that somebody slipped on? But that way we can be very mindful so that our quality of our service and, again, the safety of our our student body is really high here. Um, And then from a complaint perspective, one of the things we identified long ago at McKinley is we don't see everything that occurs. We don't know every interaction that occurs. And so we have a method in place so people can speak up and give a voice to something that they feel did not happen well. And so those are the big things that Center for Quality really brings together to try to figure out, you know, is McKinley doing everything that it needs to do and everything that it can do to really hold itself to its core values? And that's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is that a lot of what Center for Quality Quality does is, is kind of in the background. It, it's not at the forefront, and there's a lot of stuff you'll talk about too. There's a lot of stuff you can't talk about because of confidentiality, things like that. But I wanted to, to draw the curtain back a little bit um, and show that there are things happening that that McKinley does take uh, the student experience seriously. Um, that that the, not just the the medical care, but the whole experience from the moment you walk in the door to the moment you walk out. Um, so let, let's let's uh, start with uh, the surveys. Let's start there um, because I know. I mean, we, we get surveys. You get all the time. You go to a restaurant. And they give you a, a receipt and says, "Hey, on the back of this, on the back of the receipt, fill out a survey." And half the time, I'm like, "Yeah, okay, whatever." You know, it doesn't really make a difference. Doesn't really matter. Um, those surveys are really important here at, at McKinley. So, uh, it, it one, what's the importance of them? How are they? How do they? Use, how are they used? And then I know there's some changes coming um, to how they're being presented and trying to make it a little bit more of a user friendly experience to fill out those surveys as well. Yeah. So our patient satisfaction survey is our primary tool to get the voice of the student within McKinley. 
Um, it's not a terribly long survey. It kind of has been a very broad, vague type of a response. Um, and frankly, we've not been having good responses from it. We send out at least 100 surveys a day, sometimes up to about 150. And what we do is we send them out anonymously to individuals who had a visit. When they get that particular email, they may or may not respond. Um, our current response rate is about 5%, which is very low for a survey response rate. Uh, when that survey was designed, the questions were okay, but it was also, again, it's anonymous. We don't know anything about our given students. And so even though we have good feedback for a lot of the things that we do, we don't know how we're really impacting students across the board. We don't know if we're impacting men as equal to women, as equal to other genders. We don't know if we are impacting a given college better than another college. We don't have any idea how we're really truly impacting our students and where we can really make a change. Collectively, as an example, our students say we have great hand hygiene. That's fabulous. But if we don't know that we're not washing our hands appropriately in front of the males as much as we are the females that come into the building, now all of a sudden we have an area that we could be impacting that we really don't have the data for. So we spent a lot of time in the fall of 21 with our IT team to rework the survey um, for two reasons. One, we wanted to be able to get demographic information that is de-identified. So we've worked really hard to get our information so when a student walks in the door and they, they know that they're being flagged to get this survey technologically in the back end, um, that that particular survey gives us their demographic information without any of their private health information. So we don't get a name, we don't get a UIN, we get an age, we get a gender, we get a race, we get all of the identifying information of what what that person's makeup is, including their college and their grade level, we get no information on them to be able to link it back to them. And then the other thing that we're also doing with the survey is we're breaking it down to make it a little simpler. Um, you know, a 5% response is not helpful. It really doesn't give us a good reflection of the student body. But what we're doing is we're narrowing it down to ask two main questions. One, were you satisfied with what you got care-wise today? And two, would you refer people? Because in medicine, those are really the two big questions. If you were satisfied and you would refer people across the board, that was a good visit. Now, if there are other little nuances that we can determine with the rest of the survey, we're gonna give students the option to answer additional questions. And within those additional questions, we can start to get some more information. But to your point, this is all back-end information. It's stuff that we can't readily share with folks because we, necess we don't necessarily have the ability to just put it back out once it's done. We need to take the time and analyze it. Um, and that's, again, where we kind of go back to our complaint process, where the information that comes into Center for Quality has to be researched. We don't do knee-jerk responses. We don't take a negative complaint from a student and run and change everything within McKinley. We take the time to evaluate, why was this negative complaint perceived by the student? Is it something where we had a provider who maybe could have used some kinder language that came across to a student at a bad time? Or was it really some sort of negligence that we really needed to focus on? Um, and we don't put that information back out quickly because we do need to do that investigative process. We need to make sure that we know exactly the story that's going on, not just from the student side, but from the provider or the staff side so that we know exactly where information is. Um, and so that, that provider or the patient satisfaction survey really is that key piece that comes forward to help us guide where McKinley is moving in the future. Well, and we, before we got on air, we were talking about a little bit, you mentioned that when that ne negative visits can happen. And, and if they do happen, you know, we do our best to, to research it and find out. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do to go back in time. There's nothing you can do to go back to fix that. It's all about moving forward. Um, so the the information that we get from these surveys is really important because it's telling us what has occurred so we can be better prepared for the next the next visit or the next student or things like that. Correct. And, and within Center for Quality, we really kind of have this mindset where we we want to do what we can to make sure a student's occurrence within the building was was a positive occurrence, right? We don't want any sort of negative visits going on. Um, but anytime that we do get that complaint when it comes in, we do try to take the time to sit down with the student, whether it's face to face or, or over a phone call or an email, and not only engage with them to, to find out what their experience was and, and why the negativity happened, and obviously to offer an apology if there really was something truly, truly negative. But we also want to take the time to acknowledge to them, like, your feedback is helping us to improve what we do. So whatever negative experience you experienced doesn't have to happen for the next student that comes in the door. And so far, we've had really, really good responses with our students that we've met with. Um, they, they understand that 
the negativity that they may have gotten, the negative experience that they had here doesn't need to continue to occur. Um, and, you know, they understand that things do happen. They just want to be able to see that change or at least know that change is coming forth. And so one of the things that we always do is as much as we can, again, we, we have a number of confidentiality issues that we deal with on a daily basis. Um, but we try to tell the students really what our plan of attack is, because, you know, I can't tell them that we're going to go and punish their provider because most of the time you don't go punishing somebody directly. You go and engage in a dialogue. You, you try to come up with a corrective, corrective action. You try to help them learn why what they did maybe didn't come across as well as what they thought that it was going to. Um, and I openly tell that to these people because they, they deserve to know how we're trying to improve ourselves because that way they understand the efforts that we're making to try to improve, again, our, our quality of what we do here within the building to make sure that we don't have these negative occurrences. I, I do want to pivot just a little bit because I, I don't want the, the idea to be presented that Center for Quality is just about negative response. It's, it's just about reactionary. Um, it, that's, that's part of it because that's with, with any business, with any medical facility, you have those experiences and you, you, you deal with them. Um, but it's also about being proactive. And, uh, you know, every podcast we've had, we've talked about coming out of the pandemic and coming, you know, transitioning back to campus and things like that. And it's no different here at McKinley. Um, and, and one of the things I know that, that, that your office has been really instrumental in and that McKinley has tried to do is this idea of efficiency of, you know, students are busy, of safety and, and protocols and things like that. And so really looking at streamlining visits and making sure that everything is everything that's done is intentional and is done for an intentional reason and it's, there's no wasted time, wasted space because students are busy, you know, especially in this day that people want it, you know, quickly and efficiently in and out. Um, so how, what, are, what are some of the things that have happened this past semester that you're looking at going forward to try and make that student experience a, a quicker, or not necessarily quicker, but a more efficient one? Well, let me spin that just a little bit and start with our, our whole process we're looking at and what we're calling quality monitoring. So one of the big things that we identified within the last 365 days is that we have a lot of, as you noted, reactionary responses, right? You're, you hear this thing that comes up and, oh, we need to do something about this. And so we're trying to take a really proactive response with what, as I said, we're calling quality monitoring. And so what we're doing is we're dashboarding out a number of items that we can measure within our electronic health record. We're dashboarding a number of things out that we know that are processes in the building that we can monitor from time to time with other measures to make sure that we are maintaining a level that's acceptable to what it is within the building for us. Um, I'll use my hand washing example. If we know that we need to be at 100% hand washing and we have our quality monitoring in place so we can see it's 100%, 100%, 100%, the first time we see that it happens to drop, now all of a sudden we can engage in a dialogue much faster than trying to do anything else. Um, to go along with that though, in addition to the quality monitoring, the, the dialogue we've had around our data points that go into the quality monitoring has really led to us trying to digitize more processes and trying to really take the visit that's going on within the building and how do we simplify and streamline where we're at. Um, you know, as an example, students walk in the door Students have to go into the kiosk area. They have to answer a couple questions, get themselves checked in, and then they have to take the time to then walk to their particular unit. Well, we know that there are technological barriers to students to have to do that. It takes a little time. There's a little confusion that I'm not just walking right into my clinic. I have to stop and do this other piece. And so we're looking at ways to leverage technology so that when a student walks in the door with their Illinois app, that they're registered, they're, they're checked in. They can go right to where they need to get to. Um, and, you know, some of these things, as, as this particular example, we're working with IT to figure out how can we do this, how can we build this out well, so that we can actually get a visit in and taken care of the way it needs to be. Um, but at the same time, you know, in the COVID world in which we live, how can we do that and at the same time make sure all of our safeguards are in place? And so there are some things that we are still trying to figure out how we can build around some of those issues. Um, some of them were being very honest that we can't build around those types of issues. And so we're going to have to keep some things, unfortunately, in the place where they are uh, so that we'll have a little more time to build this out. So that hopefully when the pandemic's over, we can pull some switches and get some things done much quicker. Um, but really, that's one of the big things. The other big thing that we're trying to start to champion is this concept of medical consumerism, which we think is really going to start to drive quality within McKinley and quality within the university. And medical consumerism really is uh, the concept where, you know, a student walks in, they're, they're 18 years old, they're a new adult, legally speaking, 
and they've never really been away from home yet. And how do we help them to utilize not only McKinley and the services at McKinley, but the healthcare system in general, identifying that McKinley cannot be everything for every student. We do have to rely on our, our community partners as well. And so we're looking at trying to advance not only this medical consumerism so people know how to go through systems, but also self-help guidance. We also want to make sure that we are teaching students how to advocate for themselves. We also want to make sure that we are teaching students about levels of medicine. Um, it's one thing to say, I have a sniffly nose and I'm going to go see my primary care provider or a nurse practitioner. It's another to say, I have a sniffly nose, I need to go see an EENT specialist. Um, and, you know, we're trying to help students to see how this works and how to navigate these processes. And so part of our quality commitment that we have for 22 is really to start building out some more of these processes as well, because we want our students to be empowered. We want them to not only have a very healthy and successful time here at the university, but we want them to be able to leave empowered to use the healthcare systems throughout the United States and throughout the world. Well, and that also plays a part in that you said, you know, McKinley can't be everything for everybody. But if, if we can help guide students to what we have and how to use it and how to navigate the health system, um, then they know where to go. So you don't get a visit for somebody who comes in from that, well, you need to actually go see a specialist or you, you don't get somebody who comes in and say, you know, we can triage this over the phone, you know, or the, the, these types of things. If, if we can help educate um, these kids who are out on their first time, you know, they're out from under mom and dad's covering and then mom and dad's doctor. And it's a daunting thing. And, and so that's, that's a huge uh, part of what we try and do here at McKinley um, that students haven't always understood. Um, and so that, that's, a, that's a big part of what's trying to be pushed forward and what we're, we're trying to um, just, tr just trying to put to the forefront to, to help students have the best experience they can have here. Um, let, let's, let's stop for a moment and talk about a little things, a couple things that did happen in the uh, fall semester of 21. Um, the one that I, I really think is fantastic and you were instrumental in doing is the chatbot. Um, you know, and now somebody may look at it and go to the website and say, why do I want to bother with the chatbot? What, what's the advantage of, if you come to the McKinley's website, website for whether you know what you're looking for, or you don't know what you're looking for, what's the advantage of starting with the chatbot? So I have to say the chatbot is near and dear to my heart. Um, <laughs> you're right. Not only am I the one that built it out, but I, it was my frustration that brought me to build the thing out. Um, you know, I, I am a huge tech user myself. And when I started getting into the website to try to find information that was needed for me, not only for myself personally to learn, but also to share with folks, I was very frustrated in having the ability to find those things quickly. Um, we have a search feature as every website does, but that search feature really kind of throws up like, oh, here's all the responses that you have. And then you still have to nickel and dime through to figure out like, where am I going? What do I need? What we've really done with the chatbot is designed a, a very simplistic, but a very user-driven process. So if you ask the chatbot a very short question or you type in a term, um, one of my favorites actually is hours. Um, the, the hours of McKinley are located on the McKinley website in the upper right-hand corner. It's not intuitive. It's, it's a washed out white color and a black or, or excuse me, an orange background that you really can't see very well. And so when you go to search it, it doesn't actually search very well. You get hours of all kinds that pop up. But when you ask the chatbot about the hours, the chatbot is very driven to gauge you to the hours of McKinley and takes you right to where you want to go to. Um, it, and so we've, we've built this out very robustly to make sure this is the whole situation. Um, but the other side of the chatbot that we do is the chatbot gets trained at least every 12 hours, oftentimes it's closer to every six hours. And we did that for an explicit reason where we have a lot of students who have a lot of unique questions that we can't even begin to foresee. And we really wanted to be responsive to give that information. And so our chatbot is very descriptive and, you know, hey, check back. Hey, give me give me your feedback of what what you need. And we're going to work through this. Um, and so not only are we able then to continue to point students to the rec correct information in the McKinley website, but we have a lot of community resources, a lot of campus resources that students come to McKinley asking questions. One of my absolute favorites is, how do I get a hold lifted? Well, McKinley is the right place to come if you have a medical hold, but McKinley is the wrong place to come if you have a general hold on your registration account. And so what we've done is provided within the chatbot that exact information. Hey, if you're having a medical hold, click here. We'll take you to the right spot. If you're not having a medical hold, you're just having a hold, click here. It's gonna take you to the registrar. We're gonna get you to the right page that you really need to get to. And our point behind that is, as I said, it's designed really for the user to have a quality experience, to have a, a quick experience, honestly. So you're not wasting time fumbling on a website and then getting frustrated and then perhaps shooting an email or sending a call or a phone call to try to get that response. Let's get you that information and get you that information quickly. 
Um, you know, I, I love talking about the fact when we launched the chatbot on August 17th, so just before the term started, um, within that first month, the chatbot had over 100,000 hits because people come to the website are, are very aggressively greeted by the chatbot. Hello, let me help you. Um, and within that, you know, you, you remove a number of the, the people that did, really didn't interact. Um, but within that, we didn't have a lot of questions because we really did build the chatbot very fluidly so that people knew where they needed to go up front. Um, we actually did our research in advance with our Google Analytics from our actual website to determine what the chatbot needed to guide people to quickly. And so with that, not only did we have an amazing, amazing fall, um, but we actually got to the point where less than 2% of the actual interactions with the chatbot go to what's called the fallback or the chatbot going, um, I don't know what to do for you, ask another question. Um, and that I think speaks very highly to what's going on. Um, and then for our own internal measures, Part of the reason we drove the chatbot, um, for those listening, you might know that there's been a lot of questions around COVID lately, and a lot of those come <laughs> to McKinley. Um, my team in Center for Quality, with the email accounts that we manage that are external, um, that are on like the COVID website and some other places, we were getting about 50 to 60 emails a day. Um, and, you know, we're here to help, we're here to serve, but you can't do anything else when all you're doing is answering questions on email. And so once we got the chatbot out, uh, literally within two weeks, that 50 to 60 emails per day dropped to 10. Um, the chatbot has been so effective that even over the break that we've had, we are down to literally less than five emails per day that are coming in for us to have to manage. The chatbot's managing the rest of them. And so it really is a very, very effective way for us to get some of our time back to work on continuing quality within the building while at the same time reducing the students' time that they are spending searching the website, waiting for a response, and you know just not having the information to move forward. Information is power, and the faster we can get you that information, the quicker you can leverage things. You know, and, and one of the things you talk about, if you're not, you can, the things you can do when you're not just answering emails all day, um, because of that drop off because of the chatbot, uh, your office and, and your staff is actually working to improve the website. You talked about how you know certain things aren't very clear, they're, they're not not real user friendly. I know that's something that's going on right now that that is working, moving forward. So the the, the leveraging of responses and, and understanding what students are doing allows you to to direct. Uh, energy other places to increase um you know and, and like i said it's all behind the scenes these are things all that behind. that students wouldn't necessarily notice or understand or know that even happening right now it looks like you know well nobody's do, doing anything about the website there's lots going on with the website it's just not public facing part of it yet correct and, and i think you know two things i would say one yes it's it's all behind the scenes it's all stuff that is continuing constantly to try to be improved um but it's also that piece where the more feedback we get the better we can do yeah. Um, I, I would really hope that more students on campus would give more feedback, not just to McKinley, but everywhere. Um, you know, the, the whole conversation around surveys is you only hear the negative, you only hear the negative, and then sometimes you hear the super amazing positive, but you only hear the negative. Um, you have to hear the status quo as well. You have to hear that, hey, you know, you guys did a good job today. No, no pat on the back, no nothing else, but that this thing's actually working the way you need it to. Because otherwise, you just kind of have to assume where things are going. And in fact, one of the, one of the changes we are making here, um, going back to our patient satisfaction survey, uh, lots of students, you know, about a five point scale, we, we use strongly agree to strongly disagree. And in that middle is I neither agree nor disagree. And we've really pushed at least internally to get away from that. We want people to say, I agree with this, or I disagree with this. Um, and really, that's because we need to know how that feedback works. We can't have people just riding the middle, you have to be able to make a choice. You have to be able to provide critical feedback and, and getting people away from that center like, yeah, it's okay, is where we really needed to go. We need to know, is it a positive experience? Is it a negative experience? Are we really living up to the standards that we have put out there for ourselves in the eyes of the student? Or could we really be doing a better job? Could we really take the time to enhance some things? And so we're very excited by not only removing that, but by hoping more people are going to get more feedback. And we will be working on getting some external information as soon as we can. Um, that website redevelopment will be very nice to give us a place to do that. Um, but again, it, it's all about behind the scenes stuff and trying to not have it as behind the scenes. But unfortunately, that's where it has to live due to confidentiality. Yeah. And, and so we, we really do understand that. We try to balance that as much as we can. Um, I can tell you within McKinley itself, we've done an amazing job this last year being way more transparent with all of our information, which is great. Um, we have a lot more staff speaking up and asking a lot of questions and really 
you know, helping us with some of the nuanced information of things that we wouldn't have been able to think about otherwise. And so we're hopeful that as we continue to build this out, we can get some more of that from the student voice. We're almost out of time. Um, but one thing I want you to, I would like you to speak on real quick. Uh, just, uh, I know it's going to be hard to put it real quick, but uh, real quick is that uh, sometimes students and parents and other people uh, look at McKinley and say, well, are they just, start, do they just do their own thing? Are they just kind of by themselves? You know, who, what, what, what is this? You know, um, and this fall we had accreditation. It happens every three years. Um, but in your office heads that up again. Uh, could you talk about what accreditation means and that, you know, what makes McKinley a part of a larger health service is not just we just sit here in our building on the U of I campus and do our own thing, but we're connected to, to, to another organization as well. Yeah, so I, I have the luxury of being in accreditation for a long time. And accreditation really is your public commitment to quality. We could sit inside McKinley all day and say, we're committed to quality and here's our surveys and here's our stats. And that's fabulous. That's going to be meaningful. But we've taken it upon ourselves to go to an external body and within that external body, they set up standards. And those standards are evaluated by a governing body. Those are the standards that multiple health associations are then held to. And because of that accreditation, you now know that you have a quality that compares with people out in the real world. Um, our governing body is AAAHC. I apologize, I don't remember off the top of my head what it is. <laughs> um, but it's for health centers. And one of the really nice things about AAAHC is it actually has a smaller subdivision that it's the same as the larger division, but it's for student health centers. And so not only do we get information about how we compare to health centers, we get information on how we compare to student health centers. And in fact, uh, it was absolutely wonderful when we had our visitors here this fall, one of them had worked at the University of Colorado in Denver, and the other one had worked at the University of Wyoming. And they had run the student health centers there. And so it was really great to have our peers come in from other health centers and say, hey, for a student health center, you guys are doing good. For a health center, you guys are doing good. And that, that's really meaningful because that tells us that not only are we doing a good job compared to our peers, but remove the stigma that we're a student health center. We have quality that compares to the public information that people can walk into every day. We have quality that compares to Carl and OSF and numerous other places, um, depending upon accreditation, obviously of where they're at, but you, you compare yourself to the public and you put yourself out there so that you're providing that guidance. We aren't just providing care to students. We're providing care to people. And that's really a meaningful thing for us. We want to make sure that people are well taken care of. Our people happen to be students at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. That's great. But they're still people. And that goes back to that medical consumerism. We need to treat them like really good people because they're going to leave here and they're going to be really good people for other health systems. So yeah, the, the accreditation was a great piece. We, we did an amazing job. Um, as with any accreditation, they find a couple little things. I'm very, very happy to report that the couple of things they found in 18, they found even fewer things this time. Um, and in fact, I, I'll be very happy to share. One of the big things that they found for us was a peer review process that they felt we could do better. We actually showed them while they were here the updated plans for our peer reviewed process. And they said, this is great. This is absolutely what, if you'd had in place, you wouldn't have had this concern come up. And so we were really, really excited to have had that because we, we looked at ourselves in our, our internal review process and determined, hey, we can do better at this. And we came up with a plan to do better. And guess what? That plan was stamped as, yeah, this is really what we're looking for. This is better. We just didn't have the time to implement it. And so we're, we're very excited for that to be rolling out this year as well. Um, but yeah, but it is that final piece that really does show that accreditation is quality of what you're doing. Nick, I really appreciate you taking the time today. Uh, your office is instrumental in so many things behind the scenes. And uh, you've been a huge asset here. You've been here about a year now with McKinley. Um, and you've just been a huge asset. And I just I really appreciate you taking the time today. Thanks, Matt. As we've run into this spring semester, as we head towards this, this new uh, year, uh, McKinley Health Center is dedicated to serving the student body, um, but is also be, uh, dedicated to being proactive and analyzing and adjusting to the needs of the student. And a lot of it happens behind the scenes. A lot of it is, is never seen by the student, but you see the effect of it. And uh, so if you have questions about, about any of our processes, if you have questions about the Center for Quality, if you have questions for Nick, you can contact us at McKinley. We'll share what we can. Obviously, we can't share everything, but we'll do, we're will do. we happy to talk and dialogue. And you can contact us at, at Healthy Illini. We're happy to have that dialogue as well because we want to help you start this new year and walk alongside you. Thank you for joining us today. You are on a personal journey no matter where you are in it. You are important and you matter. Your health and wellness are important and matter. And we are here to keep you well to excel. So go have a great week, Illini. Let us know how you're doing. 
and we'll catch you next time on Healthy Illini.